Hello, church. Blessed Holy Week to all of you. Um, I want to share with you what we're going to be doing here over the next of the course of the next three days. On Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of Holy Week at noon, we will post a, a devotional piece based on the reading for the day um, for the churches. And when I say um, we, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that uh, Pastor Kelly from Augsburg Lutheran Church, Pastor Brenda from Our Savior Lutheran Church, myself talked and agreed that each one of us would do a uh, devotion for one of those days, and then we would post it to our uh, our social media page, YouTube page, whatever that is, and then share it between the three churches over the course of those three days. And I'm doing the first one, and just to let you know how that will go, uh, there will be a reading. Uh, ours is from Hebrews today. And then uh, there'll be a short devotion, prayer at the end, and uh, that will be it. But it will be something that everyone can tune into uh, from the three churches over the courses of these three days of Holy Week uh, that will hopefully enrich your Holy Week experience. So let's start with the reading. Hebrews 9, 11 through 15. But when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, because a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. The book of Hebrews is one of those books that tends to be a little confusing to us all, but it is also an incredibly important book because it helps us to see the thread of God's salvation story sewn throughout the entire Bible, holding Old and New Testament together. In our reading today, it feels maybe less like the sewing of a fabric than it is the stitching of a wound. If you've ever read the Bible, if you have studied the Bible in any detail, you may have wondered about the sacrifices of the Old Testament. How does the blood of an innocent animal offered by sinful people appease a vengeful God? The book of Hebrews tells us this idea was always flawed. It was flawed in so many ways. The people were sinful. The priest was sinful. The sacrifice was never really perfect. But what we understood, what the sacrifice reminded us of, was that somehow, some way, our sins needed to be atoned for. Things needed to be made right. We just had it all wrong. Our imperfect sacrifices were never going to placate an angry God. Nor was that the point. They were always a foreshadowing of the perfect sacrifice to come made by the perfect high priest. It was always about a loving God giving the blood sacrifice demanded by a sinful people. We thought, and sometimes we still act like, the sacrifice is ours to give. But the truth is that God knew all along that only God could offer this sacrifice. Jesus entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. It never need be repeated. It cannot be improved upon. This alone was the perfect sacrifice offered by God for you. Let's pray. 
O God, your Son chose the path that led to pain before joy and to the cross before glory. Plant his cross in our hearts so that in its power and love we may come at last to joy and glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.